In this video, we're going to be discussing how you can scale to $100,000 a month within 90 days. You should be able to create an offer by either going up market in the existing industry that you're in or by going to an adjacent industry, figuring out exactly what the market wants and then providing that to them as the offer. And within 30 days of those three months, you should be able to collect $100,000 and create the system to do that repeatedly month after month and scale the revenue of the business. A lot of people misconstrue what an offer actually is. People think that the offer is the mechanism or the service that they are providing to the market. When in actuality, the offer is the value created by you solving a problem. The larger the problem, the more money you create because you've created more value. So how do we actually go about finding an offer within your existing industry or going to an adjacent industry or going to one entirely new altogether? So I'm gonna dive into the specifics that you need to keep in mind. I want to preface all of this by stating the skill set it takes for you to get to $100,000 a month takes no more effort than the skill set it takes to get to $10,000 a month. The mindset change is what's most important, but the actual application of the techniques and the acquiring of the skills takes exactly the same amount of effort. It's the reason why I have students who are 18 years old doing $100,000 a month with their very first business, as opposed to them trying to go and create the skills to do a $10,000 a month business, a six figure business, which you are essentially providing freelancer services. At $100,000 a month, you are more focused on being an actual CEO. Everything is predicated on the offer. So how do we find a one of one offer that is a gold mine offer? So the first thing is we need to ensure that this is a problem that is providing value to the marketplace above six figures. So what do I mean by this? We need to ensure that the industry, when they are engaging the market, they are providing value and they are collecting over six figures. You are going after a market where the value that you're creating for them is only in the maximum five figure range. So simply by using the exact same mechanism and going up market to a segment that is providing value in engagement sizes over six figures, we are already making a drastic difference. So six figures, ideally seven to eight figures. The next thing that we're looking for is the market size, the total addressable market. So to understand the total addressable market, we first need to understand what the segment is. So if this is a full industry, and we can use the example of real estate, within real estate, there are verticals. You have consulting, which would consist of real estate agents. It would consist of brokerages. You then have development. And within development, you would have multifamily. You would have municipal. And you would also have commercial. So when I say segment, I'm referring to a segment of a vertical. So to understand Understand total addressable market, we need to take into consideration the entirety of the industry because you can first solve for the offer at the segment level. And when you run into TAM problems there, you can then address the vertical level and then eventually the full, which is what we've done at Savvy Capital. We first started off just by providing capital raising services to startups. And then we moved on to public companies and now we're doing funds. We're entirely agnostic to who we bring on. So we started at the segment level and then we moved vertical level and now we're at industry level. So this is what you need to keep in mind. Now, I do not use metrics or KPIs when I'm making these distinctions. I just want to ensure that the market is big enough. If you're going after something that's very, very niche, like for instance, cannabis drink manufacturing, that's incredibly niche. There's maybe a thousand companies on the entire planet. This is something that's too small. So you want to ensure that the TAM is large enough that you can sustain a business, get to 100,000 at, at very minimum in your first month. But ideally, you want that segment to sustain you for one quarter, two quarters, if you're doing everything right. So the first thing that you need to keep in mind is the total addressable market. Now, the next thing is the growth rate. Now in investment banking, there's this fancy acronym, CAGR, and it stands for Compound Annual Growth Rate. If your industry has a growth rate of over 10%, you're generally in, in good standing. There are industries, however, that have very, very aggressive growth rates. For instance, the influencer and attention economy is growing at around 46% per year. 
46%. So if you can find an industry that has a very high growth rate or an industry that you're in currently and use this as a, a prism to identify whether it's something that you should be staying in, it's something that you can use. I'm not telling you to completely you know, throw out a business that is already working or throw out a fantastic gold mine offer idea because the compound annual growth rate is relatively low. It's just something that you can use to, to validate your hypotheses or to use as additional information when you're creating hypotheses. Compound annual growth rate, you want it higher than 10. Now, the next thing that we need to keep into consideration is the supply and demand. So supply and demand economics, very, very basic. If you went to university, took economics class, this would be like the first thing that you learn. But because most of us have learned business through online education, we seem to keep this very basic principle outside of our purview and we don't use it as a mechanism to fuel our decision making. So here's a basic supply. You have equilibrium at this point. This is supply, this is demand. If the market was running perfectly, you would have perfect supply for perfect demand. But this is not what we want. What we want is very little supply and very high demand. And generally what happens is someone finds the right set of variables. They find high growth rate. They find total addressable market. They identify what we're going to get to next, which is mechanism, a mechanism that services an industry and solves a relatively big problem. And they found a gold mine offer. And then because the person who's found that generally is going to run some sort of education program, they then teach that to people. And then everyone gravitates towards that one thing. And then what happens? supply completely gets disproportionate to the existing demand. Demand stays the same, supply increases. What happens? The price decreases. Is we want very little supply, if not zero supply with high demand. Now, if you are going after an existing entrenched industry, there will already be people within that industry servicing. However, what makes you different is your mechanism through which you achieve the result. And that's exactly what we're gonna talk about next. Because you can have high supply in terms of people solving a problem, but if you come in with a new mechanism, you've created disruption and now supply goes back down to zero, which is what you're going for. So the next thing is the mechanism. Mechanism not being used. Because when the mechanism is not used, you create disruption. Let me give you an example. When we started our capital raising firm, we said that we would use scaled outbound and online advertising to raise money for startups. No one had ever done this before. So we introduced a new technology, a new mechanism into the industry. We were able to come into the market and say, we've got this new way of doing it. There's no one else doing it. All of these companies need to raise money. We have basically just us as supply and all the startups in the world that need to raise money as our demand. This doesn't mean you go and copy what we do because that's going completely against what I'm trying to teach here. Because if you use these fundamentals and do the basic work that we did to identify this, you can create your own gold mine off, which is how you actually make a lot of money. You have a mechanism not being used. And by the way, what would the mechanism be? The easiest ones that we all know, ads, outbound, via LinkedIn or email, scaled. You could also have other mechanisms like a sales team bill. I know for a fact that entrenched industries, ones that are solidified in their ways, they could, they could value incredibly from you coming in and placing a sales team the way that it's structured in online business with a sales manager, closers, SDRs, or, or setters, and all the online systems that we have commission-based entirely. The two fastest or the two highest leverage mechanisms that you can use to achieve those results are ads and outbound which is the reason why that's generally the mechanism that I'm going to use when I'm coaching people or I'm going to launch a new offer. Here's the, here's the industry. It's growing at a rapid rate. I can see that there's a large total addressable market. If the total addressable market is larger, then I can run ads. If lower, then I'll do outbound because it's more targeted. Or if your mechanism is like I use the example of building a sales team, if it's building a sales team, how can I create that result that they're looking for either making them more money or saving the money by placing a sales team for them? Okay, now the next thing that we need to discuss here is whether or not you need to know how to apply the technical aspects of fulfilling. You don't. You just need to understand how the mechanism will achieve the result or the industry. Because what I teach is you blitz scaling to 100K cash collected and then hiring people to do the fulfillment. It's far more applicable for you to focus on the one position on the field that matters the most when it comes to making money, which is you being at the point of sale or 
just out of hand's reach from the point of sale. So once you've set up your channel where you're acquiring leads for this new offer that you've created, as soon as you sold a few people, you immediately hire a sales team and now you become sales manager. And then after you've collected about 100K, you go and hire an ops guy, you have an idea of what the MVP fulfillment system would look like, and then his job is to build out and solidify those systems. So your, your job, your focus is bringing money, you hire it out immediately. So how do we actually apply all of this? This is the, the theoretical knowledge. You can use Google, you can use ChatGPT, you can use Claude, and you can search for industries. You can see if the industry that you're currently working in has these principles applied to it. Or you can see if there's an adjacent vertical, something just next to it that has these fundamentals. Parent. Or you may realize that you're doing something completely wrong because the supply is too high for what your industry is. The demand's the same. So what do you do then? Well, look for industries. You look for what they are looking for. How does the industry make money? Get them more of that. That is what an offer is. You find an industry that no one else is looking at and you start reaching out to them. So this is the exact system that I use to scale a new business or an existing business to $100,000 a month within 90 days. Now, if you want me to scale your business and help you with the application of this knowledge, like I've already done for hundreds of students, then you can book a call down below with myself or someone from my team and we'll be happy to show you the process in intimate detail as it relates to you, your circumstances, and your existing offer business. So hope you enjoyed today's video and I'll see you in the next one.